from Terrace Mountain, which is actually the smallest elevation around town, but we call it the mountain. Uh, it's a great little hike in town. So Terrace is a community of about 15,000. 15, um, and we have some surrounding communities, so catch an area of about 80,000. And we are the Yellow Star. Um, as, as you saw in the previous maps, about 150 kilometers from Prince Rupert and about 600 kilometers from Prince George and about an hour and 45 minute flight from Vancouver. And we have opportunities to visit the small communities around uh, with specialists who travel kind of day to day as well as some opportunities to do a few weeks or a bit longer stints in some of the other communities as well. So in Terrace, we are 14 family physicians. We have um, always have a rotating internist, two obscani, two general surgeons. You can all read that, but basically the community hospital is GP run, as well as a clinic, but we have lots of support and backup, as well as visiting specialists, um, rheumatology, neurology, peds, psych, peds cardiology, peds rheumatology, everything else. So we get to spend days here and there with all the visiting specialists as they come through as well. This is the medical clinic where we have all of our family docs and as well as specialists working in town. But even better than the medical clinic itself is the view from the clinic, which a lot of days is nice. I think it's a theme, so the lake across the road, the view of the mountains out, out the window, all very helpful in day-to-day -day practice. Uh, our hospital has 17,000 17, patient days. Oh, I did change this, it just didn't say. We actually have deliveries have been bumped up, so in the past year it's 300, but we're at about 450 projected for this year. Uh, over 3,000 surgeries per year and over 24,000 ER visits annually. We're busy. My guess is those ER visits are up to up quite a bit. So our program in Terrace is a little bit like this. Um, <laughs> we are not block based. We are an integrated longitudinal program. So what that means is that every week is different, just like practicing rural medicine, and every day is different, just like practicing rural medicine. So we are kept organized by Susan on this lovely wall-sized calendar, so she knows where we're all going at what point in time, so that if you get confused by the kaleidoscope, you can come and check with her. But basically, what that means is that every week we're in clinic, uh, three half days, and then every morning we round our inpatients, much like a lot of the other programs. And then the rest of your time is filled in by other clinics and specialist care coming and going. Um, and often you are going to see your referrals that you've made to those specialists from your clinic. You're going to follow up with patients that you've seen emerge. You're going to see the mom and new baby that you delivered, those kind of things. We do a call a week, which is a combination as well integrated of emerge, floor, and OBS call, um, depending on what's going on. And uh, our academic half day is currently under construction, which is great. Um, there's been a lot of resident input into making that the most valuable for us. So um, it's integrated in there. And then teaching sessions with medical students at our site as well. So there's opportunities to teach, but there's only one learner on usually at a time. So you're not compete competing for whatever's happening. It's yours. You can do it. You can move. If, if something is more interesting in Emerge or happening in the hospital, you can move to those things. It's great. Like, like they said in the Strathcona video, uh, learning base, not a service base. That doesn't mean you're not working. You are providing a lot of service to the community, but you have the opportunity to move to those things that are good for your learning. Flexibility is what is expected probably overall, and it's been said in a few things. So flexibility and self-direction is great, um, but you also have to expect it the other way around. So we often don't know our schedules for the next month until the end of the month, um, those kind of things, but it means that you can create what you want to create uh, moving forward. It was a little bit stressful at first, not knowing what was planned for the whole year, but it also means that if you're really burnt out and you want to take your vacation next week, you can go ahead and do it because it's that flexible. Uh, weekly weekend calls, med student teaching, independent learning is a big one, and there's lots of different monthly teaching sessions in Terrace from more OB and um, McMaster modules, and they're kind of integrated through the model, which I think is probably a lot of the rural sites as well. Same kind of deal with what you can do. It's totally up to you in terms of outdoor and recreation. We have it all from amazing access to backcountry skiing and kayaking and biking and climbing. And also in town, we've got amazing organized sports, so rink and pool and all that kind of stuff, no problem. 
Uh, we have a lot of surrounding Aboriginal communities, so there's a lot of opportunity, and our population in clinic is largely a uh, large population of Aboriginal patients as well. So while it's not a focus of our program, you're going to get exposed to both. And the rest of these pictures have all been taken by staff or residents I'm going through. So this is our internist, Dr. Kenyon. This is Lake Ellis Lake, which is a, uh, about 15 minutes inside of town. Hiking. Backcountry, snowmobiling, skiing. I think that Shames Mountain, our mountain, our ski hill in town is a co-op, and I think it's the only co-op owned ski hill in North America, which is pretty neat. So the community owns the ski hill, and uh, it's a pretty great place. People are pretty proud of it. And this is my um, <laughs> special slide of what the real medicine of family medicine is in Terrace. So uh, that's my husband and my son and everyone in town with Liam. So I'm not sure, but community is important, and I don't think in the city that I would get this, where everybody that I'm working with cares about me and my family so much that they're seeking us out regularly, supporting us regularly, looking for opportunities to help us to participate in our lives, and I don't think that my family would have been as healthy or happy in the last two years if I hadn't been in a rural program at UBC. So I'm going to pass it on. Okay. Did you want to say anything? Oh, well, I, I don't have a presentation, but I can maybe say a little bit about Fort St. John before you go ahead. Um, it's pretty, it is somewhat similar to Terrace, but somewhat not the same in some ways because their program is quite integrated. Ours has a bit more structure, not as not as structured as Prince George, but more structure than the other smaller sites. We have a population of about 16,000 people with a, a catchment area of about 60,000. Um, we have less specialists than um, the Terrace sites, um, so we have to do it a bit more on our own, and sometimes we have to fly patients out more to Prince George and to the other larger sites. Um, in terms of the support we get, we get a lot of support, just like in any other sites, really. So, um, and our structures is like a domain of care. So we have, for example, three blocks of um, the maternity care and the child care, so to speak. So it's not quite obstetrics, pediatrics. It's kind of more spread, and, and it's very, very flexible. So if we need to change the domain of care or add a block or remove a block, we can easily do that throughout the year. And our calls are pretty decent. We don't have calls on Fridays and, and Sundays unless people want to do the extra call. And actually this year, most of our residents are doing extra more, way more calls than we ever had to do. So, so yeah, and in, in terms of like the outdoors and stuff, it's pretty much the same as all the other rooms. So, so, yeah. In summary. <coughs> Do you guys have any questions for the residents up here right now before I kick in? We'll be around. Yeah, after. we'll be around. You can ask us all the things you don't want to ask the program director. <laughs> okay, no, wait a second. How do I get to my <laughs> So uh, I'm Greg Linton. I have pounded spikes in Craigalachie. I've visited Strathcona Park. I've drank wine in Kelowna, swam in Okanagan Lake, gigged in Prince George and have several friends there. And I would have to say that all of the rural sites have something special for you and uh, they're all worth considering. Okay. So, uh, first of all, thanks to the uh, Rural Planning Group and uh, Willa for inviting us here tonight. And thanks for you all for coming out tonight. Who's first year? Second. Tailing off. Third. A surge. Fourth. Ah, okay. And for those of you who haven't met Catherine yet, she was at our ICC program. And Terrace, just put your hand up, Catherine. 
Higher, higher. Everybody can see. Right here, right on the end. Okay. So if you can't have a chance to speak to Emily about Terrace, then you can speak to Catherine. Okay. So uh, I was supposed to talk about Terrace, but Emily's eloquently spoken about Terrace. So I'm going to talk about life outside uh, rural family medicine. It's around family medicine and specifically uh, in Terrace. So uh, this is um, the time where you're supposed to bring up your declarations in the presentations. So uh, I've been living in Terrace for 19 years, uh, and in my humble opinion, it's the best place to live in BC. This is my 17-year-old son, Graham, who's graduating from high school this year. In Terrace, he plans on pursuing a career in music theater. He's a very capable uh, musician with training in piano, sax, percussion, and voice. He's also competed in alpine ski racing, was 30th in the province two years ago at Provincials. He plays rugby, is on the honor roll at school, and I'm not sure how he'd be able to enjoy all of those things uh, as easily in a larger center. So, being in a smaller place is a good place to raise a family. I should also tell you why I'm standing in this gear here right now. <laughs> because yesterday, I was fishing. And I was up at the, uh, the CX River. Do you know where the Nass River is? Do you know where the Nass? Okay, it's about 100 kilometers north of Terrace. Before Mount St. Helens in about, was it 1981 when it exploded? Before Mount St. Helens, uh, the last volcano to explode on the continent of North America was just north of Terrace in the Nass Valley about 350 years ago. So there's lava beds there and there's fantastic fishing. And so just a little Terrace um, fashion show. Uh, in the back of this thing is a little area where you can tuck your fish away <laughs> that you catch. And so I was uh, fishing for coho yesterday and I caught two really nice ones about this big, so they don't actually fit in the vest unless you put them sideways and then you can hang on to them sort of from both sides with your <laughs> arms. Is that a fishtail? <laughs> it's I should, I should have the picture here for you, but I'm too busy fishing to take pictures of that. Okay. <laughs> So by this point in your careers, you'll be starting to make some decisions about where you want to train and what path you want to take in medicine. And many will uh, feel that you're having difficulty in making these decisions because you haven't had enough exposure to all the different fields of medicine. You're up to your neck. Uh, this picture and a few others in this presentation, by the way, was taken by a local physician in Stewart who has a great knack for wildlife photography and this one was taken in particular about 10 minutes from his doorstep. <laughs> so in order to uh, make this decision, you'll have to ask yourself some soul-searching questions. Do you want to live in a big city or a small town? Do you want to know a lot about a little or more about a lot. Uh, this is, by the way, Lucy Island, about 30 minutes boat right off uh, Prince Rupert, and it's home of the uh, rhinoceros auklet. Have any of you ever heard of the rhinoceros auklet before? No. Okay. Seabirds, quite interesting. Uh, nests on these small islands on the coast. They fly back to their islands at night, and they're pretty visually challenged. So when it's dark, they don't actually land on the island, they crash into the island. So they fly into the trees, or if you happen to be standing there, they'll fly into you. Drop down, and then they find their nest. Lucy Island. So the good thing about the UBC Medical Program is that you get a, a taste for uh, rural family medicine for a month. Uh, in between second and third year, and I hear that might be changing sometime soon uh, to be a little bit longer maybe in some of these places. But you get to see what it's like to practice in a smaller center. Uh, this was taken on a rural road in France, which isn't exactly BC, but it is still rural. And <laughs> cycling has been a great hobby of mine. And because Terrace is situated at the confluence of three river valleys, 
there's numerous cycling routes to choose from, uh, many of which are fairly free of motorized vehicles if you choose your time wisely. When I chose to go to Terrace, I'd had exposure to uh, small town medicine in, Al in Alberta through my family medicine residency training and found it very exciting. You heard Emily talk about backcountry skiing. It's one of the major uh, winter attractions in Terrace. Did anybody backcountry ski here? I've been out a few times. I like skiing inbounds better. It's a little less dangerous for me. <laughs> this is my wife cycling beside me in a race in Haida Gwaii. Uh, we weren't racing against each other. We were racing together. Uh, she's competed in Ironman, so she was nice to race with me. Uh, she runs a local Olympic length triathlon in Terrace as well as a Kids of Steel program, which uh, introduces kids to the sport. She also teaches kids swimming at our local pool, and she pretty much keeps our family on track. And my family, too. <laughs> and Emily's family, too. So, you'll want to reflect on what you see yourself doing outside of medicine, because your life can be more than just medicine. Okay? This is gun sight. It's a trail just outside of Terrace with uh, fabulous views. Because you have so many options, the decision uh, may not seem so clear to you at this point as to what you want to do. This is Campania Island at the mouth of the Douglas Channel. Uh, my wife went on a short kayaking trip with my daughter there two years ago. Um, we've kayaked as a family in uh, Guayanas National Park, uh, in the Haida Gwaii. And why we do these things is that they're in our backyard. You heard about the backyard. We have exciting backyards. So come swim in our pond. This is Lake Else, 15 minutes out of town, the uh, site of the Barkman Triathlon that my wife organizes. Barkman because <coughs> logging. Terrace. Yeah. Okay, there's financial perks to consider in your residency. You've heard a little bit about this tonight. The Provincial Student Loan Program will forgive your loans at a rate of 33% a year. You'll need to stay for your two-year residency plus one year afterwards to practice in order to avail yourself of that program. So three years in total in a rural community and your entire provincial student loan is forgiven. Okay? The federal government also has a loan forgiveness program. You saw up there a little bit early up to forty thousand dollars and it's a five year deal. Okay? So two separate loan forgiveness programs if you go rural. Housing prices, you heard about this in Terrace, it's still a little cheaper, actually by a long shot than the lower mainland. And you want to consider how much debt you want to carry in your life when you're making a decision as to where you want to go. This is my daughter Anna. She's in grade 11. She's also a very accomplished musician. Piano, harp, flute, as well as voice. She's also a dancer. She's on the honor roll. Last year she went on a 10-month exchange to France and came back bilingual. Uh, we've also sponsored three exchange students in our household, Germany, Finland, and this year Norway. Uh, these exchange programs typically like to place students in smaller centers. Uh, and our families also participated in an exchange with another rural GP and his family from Australia for a year in uh, 2002. And again, this was not something we could have accomplished in a larger center because you've got to go rural to do these kinds of things. So we talked a little bit about the financial perks. There's also a few program perks. Uh, 
for the last two years, our uh, site has participated in the uh, Society of Rural Physicians of Canada annual, annual conference as our uh, site retreat. We're a three hour trip door to door from our ski cabin at Hudson Bay Mountain in Smithers. And it's been a great getaway for our family to spend time together screen free. There's a constant struggle for life work balance in medicine. And I feel like a rural setting allows you to keep your life in perspective better with such easy access to natural surroundings. We've been very lucky to grow up as a family in a small town, and this is coming from a Vancouver boy. I forgot my CD tonight. We got four different ones. We're on iTunes, Dr. Fishy. Music's a big part of my life, too. And I've got a folk band in uh, Terrace. As well as a soul review band uh, that's <laughs> played for regularly for five years. Soul professors. A bunch of middle-aged white guys playing black music. <laughs> Dr. Fishy's been together for 12 years, and we played many folk festivals, uh, played on CBC, and I'm not sure that this could have transpired in a larger center either. Just in, when you're in a smaller group in the community, everybody kind of knows everybody's interests, and you can sort of likes attract like, I think. There's other elixirs involved here as well. I'm in the midst of a startup business with a microbrewery in Terrace, too. <laughs> so, I can tell you quite honestly that none of these paths were particularly on my horizon when I started rural medicine. Uh, but this career has allowed for many, many opportunities to surface. And it's an exciting time for all of you at the beginning of your journey. So. I hope you're all looking forward to it, and thank you for your time tonight, and perhaps we'll see some of you again on elective, or part of a residency program, or maybe even working in a town in rural BC somewhere. So thanks for your time. To, well, there's not a lot of food left, but scratch whatever's left. Um, Marlo is here, he lives in Smithers and is a full um, fan, uh, rural doc and also a GP surgeon, is that right? And um, he is our rural lead physician, so he has been involved with the Kelowna program for many years and helps us to maintain the quality of our rural teaching sites. I think uh, when, if you're thinking of, of this as an option, um, a few things you, sh you can plan for. One is if you're applying to family medicine, you should have a reference from a family doctor who you've worked with. Okay? You don't have to do a family medicine elective, but you need to have somebody who's seen you work as a family doctor or as a family doctor medical student who thinks you have the, the right combination of uh, intelligence and communication skills and, and intrinsic abilities that you can work as a generalist and have patients in long-term relationships with you. Um, certainly there's options to choose integrated clerkship and uh, Terrace and Fort St. John both have an integrated clerkship and I don't know if you want to talk at all about the integrated clerkship, it's up to you, I don't want to put you on the spot, which I'm doing right now. But, um, you know, if you really want to see what it's like if you get a chance to do that, that's a great way. And many of our residents do the integrated clerkship and decide that they want to stay or they go to the other community. Um, I think some of our sites are quite small. Uh, the Terrace program accepts two residents a year. The Fort St. John program accepts four residents a year. And we go up from there to a maximum of 12, really, for a Canadian position, 13. 
So obviously, if you're interested in going to a very small site, it's a good idea to get in touch with the site director and let them know you're interested. Because when there's so few residents, it does help for him to really know that you really want that. We, we do our selection collaboratively, and we don't encourage people to do that for all our sites, and, and we don't even allow it. But for the very small sites, we, we think a good fit is the most important thing for both of you. So uh, Greg is happy to hear from anyone who's thinking of it and would like advice, and you know they'll be the first to say who shouldn't do it and who should. And I hope tonight you got a bit of a flavor of that. Um, certainly when you, you come into family medicine, we, we look at your a personal letter and we're looking again for the rural programs for people who are rational risk takers, who have shown the ability to sort of um, determine their own destiny and to solve problems and to maybe sometimes work in situations where, where things aren't crystal clear and can cope well. Um, as I said, we like a family medicine reference. We do an interview. Um, and you know, you don't have to be from BC and you don't have to have done an elective with one of us. That's, that's not part of our criteria. You guys are, anybody who's interested in family medicine, there's lots of family medicine positions across Canada. There are lots of sites. Uh, it really is, um, in some ways you're kind of overwhelmed with choice. But we hope tonight it gave you a bit of a flavor. And I know last year some people said because of this night, they started thinking of some things that they hadn't really thought of. So if we've accomplished that tonight, uh, I think we'll have viewed it as a successful evening. So I, I think at that, I'll, I'll thank you all for coming. Please feel free to ask any of us any questions. And we wish you all the best that you end up exactly where you should. Okay? Thank you.